Hi, my name's Isaac, and this is the Thinkware F200 Pro dash cam. And today, I'm gonna review it for you guys. Now, I'll be up front, right out of the gate. This video is sponsored by Thinkware. Now, normally, I don't even respond to the emails of people that propose sponsorship deals with me because normally they're peddling pretty useless, silly products. Hi there, would you be interested in doing a video on our product, the Tacoma plate? Oh, um, maybe, what is it, like a license plate? Oh no, it's just a regular plate that says Tacoma on it. Why would I want that? Why would anybody want that? Honestly, I, I, I don't know. But when Thinkware reached out, I was ecstatic because as I've mentioned in some of my other videos, my previous job was actually a car electronics salesman. And some of the products we sold were dash cams, more specifically Thinkware dash cams. They were always at the top of the pack. Customers were always satisfied with them. And honestly, I don't think I ever saw a Thinkware dash cam come back as a return. So when you've worked with a product for five years, you become pretty familiar with it. And that's why I know I can stand by Thinkware dash cams as a brand, and I'm not just shilling a random product. Plus, dash cams are really helpful nowadays. Insurance purposes, maybe somebody gets in an accident in front of you and you can be a witness to who was at fault. If somebody vandalizes your car, you can see and have video footage. And if we're being honest, I mean, nowadays, a lot of weird stuff happens out there and you'd probably just like to have it on video. Like uh, a Russian mob boss hiding a body. Well, there's something you don't see every day. I wonder if I should go check on that guy. See, if I didn't have video footage of that, you wouldn't have believed me. I hope I don't have to go into witness protection for that. Today, I'm gonna unbox the dash cam. Then I'm gonna show you guys how I installed it on my truck and some of the other methods that you can use to install it on your vehicle. Then I'm gonna give you some of my thoughts on the dash cam after having used it for a little bit. And I'm going to be completely honest. I know that's kind of hard to hear coming from a sponsored video, but I mean it. Think where wanted me to be honest, so I'm gonna be completely transparent with my thoughts on the dash cam. That means I really like the dash cam, but I think there's some stuff they could improve. All right, moving on to the actual unboxing here, opening it up, the first thing we're gonna see is the main dash camera unit. I should mention this is the dual camera setup. It is available with just the single camera as well. And then opening the box a little bit further here, you're going to have quite a lot of cords. The first here is the 12 volt. That's the easiest way to plug in as I will demonstrate a little bit later. And then this is the direct connection for the battery. Moving on a little further, you're going to have your mount for the dash camera for the front windshield. And then this is the cord to wire the rear dash camera. And then I'll show you how I did that on my truck and then here is the rear dash camera. It's on a little swivel mount so that is really convenient. You can move it around. Then you're going to have some other adhesives on here so if you don't get it on the first try you can always re-sticky the dash cam back on and then you're gonna get an SD card. We uh, focus here. This is actually a Thinkware branded SD card so that's a nice little thing. I think that's pretty cool and then you get a little case for it and the adapter for the computer. Then you're gonna get your instruction manuals. And then lastly, you have the tiny bag that you're not supposed to eat filled with those little balls. Now, I was always under the impression that this was supposed to keep a product fresh, but I don't know how fresh you can keep a dash cam. Now, moving on to the actual installation of the dash camera, there are three separate ways you guys can do this. I'm going to show you all three ways, but I'm going to start with the way I actually installed it myself. I think it's the cleanest looking, though it does take a little tiny bit of work. So let me show you what I mean. Now, Thinkware has an optional OBD2 port adapter cable you can get on their website. I'll leave a link in the description below for that. So it's this port on the end and the other port is the power cable. So what I did is I 
found where I wanted to put the dash cam. I placed it right here on the windshield and then I wired it all the way up through here, tucked it into my top headliner. And then what I did is I disconnected the battery because there is an airbag in this A pillar. I used the panel removal tool, pop this off. There's a 10 millimeter right here. Once you remove that, you can take this whole panel off and you don't have to worry about the airbag going off because you'll have the battery unplugged. And so what I did is I wired it down here and then all I had to do was plug it right into the OBD2 port and then it's gonna have a red light. That means it is powered on. And then because Thinkware sent me the two-way camera system, so I have the camera back there, what I decided to do is I removed the weather stripping right here. Of course, the weather stripping isn't gonna come off now. No, there we go. So I removed the weather stripping right here and I wired it all the way up through through that weather stripping right there, through this panel right here, and then through the back weather stripping on my door, and then tucked it in between here, and then up through the headliner, and now it sits out there. So it is a little tiny bit of a process to get it in, but it wasn't incredibly difficult. And if you have about half an hour, 40 minutes on a Saturday, it is a very clean looking install and it hides the wires very well because when I'm sitting here, I don't see the dash camera. I only see these two little wires. And then I have my remote start module up here too. So it looks fairly clean for what it is. And so the second way we can install it, this is the simplest way, the quickest and easiest way to install this dash cam if you want. You plug it into your 12 volt and then you can untangle this. If you don't mind a wire coming up through your dash here um, and into your line of sight, all you have to do is plug that in right there. And there you go, bing, bang, boom. That is the quickest way to install it. If you don't mind having a wire right there, that is very easy, very simple. Now, again, as I said, if you get the two camera system, I like to, to tuck the wire for that all the way up through there, but you don't even need to do that. Um, you can kind of just have it hang if you want from there, but that is the, the 12 volt way to install it. And then the last way, which also works out really good, we will put you down there, is you can wire it directly to your battery. Now this does require you to go through the firewall and it is, as some would say, the most difficult way to do it. I would definitely say it's the most time consuming out of all three ways, but it does provide overnight monitoring just like the way I did it. See, when you plug it into the OBD2 port, it keeps the camera going. So it does have an overnight parking mode. This one does as well. So in the box of the camera, this is what you'll get and you'll also get the 12 volt. As I mentioned before, the OBD2 is, an, is a separate accessory, but Thinkware does give you a lot of options when you want to install this. One of the other really cool things you can do with the dash cam is download the Thinkware dash cam link app, and that's going to give you a live view of what the dash cam is currently seeing. You can see the leveling for it, and you can also see what the rear camera sees. And both of these features really help when you're initially setting up the dash cam and you want to get the perfect positioning for it. You can also tune some of the settings of the dash cam on this app. So the memory card settings, the camera itself, you can see the motion detector sensitivity and you can adjust stuff like that. You can also view your files list, which is really, really helpful, especially if you just witnessed an accident or something happened and you're at the scene, you can pull it up on your phone. The one thing that was a little upsetting from the app is that you can't skim through the footage, like you can't drag through the footage, you have to watch the whole clip. So if it's a minute long clip and the accident is at like 55 seconds or something, you have to watch the whole thing all the way through unless you export it to a computer. But other than that, the app is fantastic and it is really useful in a lot of regards. All right, so now we know how to install the dash cam. But what do I actually think of the dash cam? It's been about three weeks since I filmed that other segment. And so that's given me some good time with the dash cam. And honestly, I really like it. It's proved <laughs> very useful in a lot of situations, especially in situations you wouldn't think 
Um, normally you'd think of malicious stuff, but there's been some kind of fun stuff that I've been able to capture with the dash cam too. So a couple weeks ago on my college campus, there was a little snow squall. We got four or five inches overnight and somebody after my one class had built a snowman on the back of my truck and all the other cars on the row that I was parked in. And I was like, who did this? This is so cool. I just wanted to talk to him about it. I was like, that's so neat that you did this. Really cool opportunity. And then I realized, I remembered, I was like, oh, I have a dash cam. I, I can see who did this. I can get footage of this. And so I was really, really excited. And so I ended up going uh, onto my computer and kind of skimming through the footage almost like you know like CSI or like forensic files you know I'm going through all the footage and I finally I found out who did it and so it was so cool I texted the person I said nice snowman and they were like how, how did you know it was me and I was like I just put a dash cam on my truck a couple of days ago and it captured you and it captured it out the back so it was extra useful that I had the two camera setup you know oftentimes we think of dash cams because people are being malicious, like I said, with our vehicle. But in this case, you know, someone was doing something kind of fun and kind and kind of a cute little thing to do. And so that was really cool that I captured that on video. And so it was really nice. And overall, the quality of the dash cam has been great. 1080p resolution with 30 frames a second. It's very crisp. It gets license plates from a pretty good distance too, which I really appreciate because you know, if somebody hit and runs you or something like that, you want to be able to capture their license plate, which is uh, really useful, you know, in, in those situations. So the front camera has a 140 degree angle and the back camera has a 160 degree viewing angle. If I had to levy one complaint, it's that as you can see on the footage I'm cutting to here, the Toyota Safety Sense module that's on my truck cuts into the dash cam's field of view just a tiny bit. Now, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but when I was initially installing it, I was a little disappointed because I wanted to completely hide the dash cam from my view so it was behind the mirror, and I've done that. Now it's hidden behind my mirror, but I had to sacrifice that little tiny bit of the module hanging off there. It's because they put the lens of the camera all the way to the right on this particular dash cam, which I know from selling other dash cams, they could put it in the center. So I don't know the exact reasoning they put it all the way to the right, but I'm sure there's a good reason for that. Um, and I don't think it's too detrimental that I'm getting a little bit of the safety sense there, but I couldn't put it any lower on my dash or on my window rather, because then it would obscure my view of the windshield. And if I put it higher, I'd obscure my view all the way to the left side. So this was the best place for me to put it. And I know that that's not going to be an issue with every person because not every car has that. But more and more nowadays, a lot of cars are adapting that safety sense technology kind of module right there. So it's increasingly more difficult to put a dash cam behind your mirror and kind of hide it well without it looking kind of chunky or obstructing your vision from the road. Because the last thing you wanna do is have your dash cam uh, be you know a blind spot where you don't see a car coming at an intersection now that's really my only big complaint with the dash cam thus far you know the night footage is great it really captures high quality night footage I really really like that and the day footage is very crisp as well love the rear camera the rear camera is just so cool if you are interested in this dash cam or any of Thinkware's offerings, perhaps you just want to look around and see what they have, I'll leave a link in the description box below to Thinkware's website. And that is going to conclude this video, guys. I want to thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And here is the weekly Bible verse. Unfortunately, I have also neglected to memorize this Bible verse. I'm trying, guys, okay? For those of you who don't know, I am a Christian, and I am actually studying to be a youth pastor. So, bad luck! Bad luck I haven't memorized the Bible verse that I'm presenting on screen right now. But I am working on it uh, for future videos and stuff, because it's really good for me to practice the memorization of the Bible verses. And... <laughs> Thank you. I, that actually is helpful. That is helpful that it does that. Thank you. That is also a setting that you can turn off in the settings on the app if uh, you don't want it to talk to you. Sometimes I get very lonely in here and I go, Hey, Thinkware, what's up with you? And it's like, not much. 
How are you, Isaac? I can tell you're emotionally distressed. <laughs> can you? How can you tell that? The tenure of your voice. <laughs> All right, that doesn't happen that often in here. What I was also going to say is I would uh, like to offer you guys prayer if you want. So if you have any prayer requests, <laughs> you can feel free to leave that in the comment section below as well. I love praying for people, and I feel like this is kind of a ministry opportunity for me to be able to do these videos. So I'll see you guys next time on a pickup truck, SUV, or car review. Thanks again so much for watching, and let me know.